Hi, my name is Stefan Stem. I'm from the University of Kentucky. And today I would like to talk to you about non-coding RNAs, in particular a group of highly expressed non-coding RNAs known as snow RNAs or small nucleola RNAs. Snow RNAs comes, come in two flavors, uh, CD box snow RNAs and HACA box snow RNAs. And today we're going to just focus on CD box snow RNAs. CD box snow RNAs or SNORTs get their names from characteristic sequence elements known as the C and D boxes. The C and D boxes flank a piece of the snow RNA that is known as the antisense box, and using these antisense box, snow RNAs can interact with other RNAs such as ribosomal RNAs. In addition, uh, there are self complementarity regions at the ends that form a double stranded uh, RNA structure that prevents degradation of the snow RNA. Over the last couple of years, the assembly pathway that makes snow RNAs has been worked out. With four exceptions, all human snow RNAs are residing in introns, and during the splicing reaction, these introns are released as a lariat. The lariat is open and then degraded by exonucleases. The snow RNA escapes this degradation process because of the self-complementarity at the end and because there is a protein complex known as the R2 TP complex that assembles proteins on the snow RNA that prevents further degradation. The R2 TP complex acts as a chaperone, that means it helps folding and unfolding proteins to be able to bind on the RNA. So the final product is the snow RNP, where the snow RNA has two functions. Number one, it forms a scaffold for these proteins. As you can see here, uh, the C and D boxes in the final assembly are close together. They are stabilized by a protein called 15.5. And then there's two proteins, NOP56 and NOP58, that act as space holders. And importantly, here's a protein coming in called fibrillarin, and this protein fibrillarin performs 2'-O methylation on the target RNA. The whole complex is set up to allow the specific methylation of one particular residue in the target RNA that is five nucleotide downstream of the D or D prime box. This model has been established for about 25 years, but it is, it is incomplete. First of all, half of the human snow RNAs have no predictable targets, so we don't know their function. Second of all, in the last couple of years, a large number of human diseases have been described where snow RNAs are lost and there is a disease phenotype without an apparent change in ribosomal RNA structure or functions. These diseases can be fairly common. There are numerous examples in cancers. Several snow RNAs have been shown to mediate lipotoxic stress, protect cells against the detrimental effect of free fatty acids, and if these snow RNAs are lost, a diabetes might result. And as we see later, uh, snow RNAs are critical for a human disease called Prader-Willi syndrome. Finally, recent biochemical studies showed new function of snow RNAs. Um, these studies are based on a fractionation scheme where cell nuclei are separated into fractions that contain the methylase fibrillarin and do not contain this methylase fibrillarin. And unexpectedly, about half of the human snow RNAs are found in fractions that don't contain the methylase fibrillarin, indicating that they have functions outside uh, RN ribosomal RNA methylation. Closer analysis then showed that several snow RNAs bind to target messenger RNAs, and the binding site to these messenger RNAs are across the whole sequence of the snow RNA, showing that the snow RNA does not act in this well-established methylating snow RNP. Large progress in these new functions of snow RNA has been made by the analysis of the Prader-Willi syndrome. Prader-Willi syndrome is a congenital disease, and people with this disease uh, are characterized by slow growth. They have low growth hormone levels, and most strikingly, they're obese because they cannot reach satiety after a meal. And due to this uh, lack of satiety, they're hyperphagic. That means they cannot stop eating and uh, become obese and subsequently develop uh, diabetes. The genetic reason for Prader-Willi syndrome has been worked out over uh, the last 10 or 15 years and is uh, due to a loss of a gene region on chromosome 15. And strikingly, this gene region contains six snow RNAs and microdeletion indicate 
that these snow RNAs are essential for the disease phenotype. One of these snow RNAs called SNORT115 uh, has sh been shown to show sequence complementarity to the serotonin receptor 2C and this sequence complementarity uh, changes alternative splicing of the serotonin receptor 2C. The serotonin receptor 2C is a neuron specific receptor in the brain that controls appetite and satiety in the hypothalamus. The receptor pre-messenger RNA generates two main classes of proteins. One of these classes is a truncated receptor uh, that has only three transmembrane domains and one, the other class is the a full-length receptor having seven transmembrane uh, domains. The full-length receptor reaches the surface of the cells and can signal. In contrast, the truncated receptor uh, is stuck in the endoplasmic reticulum and through heterodimerization can sequester the full-length receptors and possibly other receptors inside uh, the cell. The genetic basis for these two isoforms is a double-stranded RNA structure uh, that contains the binding site for SNORT115. Due to these double-stranded RNA structures, the normal splicing pathway is the formation of the truncated receptor and only when the SNOW RNA is present, this double-stranded RNA structure is opened and the full-length receptor can be formed by inclusion of an alternative exon. In addition to the SNOW RNA, uh, the formation of the full-length receptor can be promoted by RNA editing that changes five uh, adenosine residues that also weaken the double-stranded structures. So the SNOW RNA is in essence changes the equilibrium between a truncated isoform and a full-length isoform. So, thus SNOW RNA regulates the activity of the serotonin receptor system because a truncated isoform acts as a dominant negative form switching off a serotonin system. In terms of function, this means that the SNOW RNA regulates the activity of the serotonin receptor by controlling the ratio of the truncated to the full length receptor isoform. In the absence of the SNOW RNA, there is too much of the short isoform present in cells, essentially switching off the serotonin signal. When the SNOW RNA is present in most in our brains, then the full-length receptor isoform is formed and this full-length isoform can then signal, and that means in the hypothalamus, uh, it can signal satiety after a meal, telling the brain to stop uh, eating. Underlining the non-methylating property of the SNOW RNA, SNOT115 can be substituted by an oligonucleotide, and this oligonucleotide bind to the same region of the RNA double-stranded structure, promoting the full-length serotonin receptor, which stops feeding in mouse models. The example of Prader-Willi syndrome clearly shows the function of a non-methylating uh, SNOW RNP. The findings are summarized in this model here. In humans, most SNOW RNAs reside in introns and they are released in the splicing reactions. Now, the fate of the SNOW RNA can be twofold. Number one, the SNOW RNA can form a methylating complex and this methylating complex contains fibrillarin and it binds to ribosomal RNA uh, in the, the nucleolus and performs 2'O methylation of ribosomal RNA. However, there's a second uh, function of the SNOW RNA and this second function is to associate with HNRNPs and other RNA binding proteins and then interact with messenger RNAs or pre-messenger RNAs in the uh, cell and, change, and this changes splicing and possibly uh, also RNA stability as some SNOW RNAs are even exported into the cytosome. The ratio between these two uh, functions is likely controlled by the cell as the machinery that packages a SNOW RNA into a methylating complex is controlled by signaling pathways such as the mTOR, mTOR pathway. So this model explains that SNOW RNAs contribute to gene regulation by regulating alternative splicing, a process that is used to make a more economical use out of the genome. It also shows that, like old dogs, SNOW RNAs can learn new tricks in molecular biology.